Hi everyone, this is Anu, finally a name to put to the videos, and I'm in my painting smock in my studio, which means that we're going to get painting soon. Um, I'm going to guide you through how I created this painting, and uh, if you want to find out more, stay tuned. So today I'm working on a different surface. I'm working on panel, but I have copper leaf on it, and it's been cured, and it's been prepared for paint. So I am painting away. I'm putting in the darks and outlining the basic shapes of the face. Each surface accepts paints very, very differently. And with this, it is very slippery, I find. So it, I'm trying to use it to my advantage because I want to show some of the copper and really use the warmth that it provides. And I also want to offset the warmth of the copper in the shadows. I use a lot of green to kind of cool down the skin in the shadow areas. And especially on this surface, it's important to work in layers because it really depends on how I want to use the surface underneath and how much of it I want it to peek through and how much I want it to cover. So I'm really making sure to work fat over lean so my initial layers have a lot of medium so that I have a thinner layer so that I have thinner paint on the surface. Working this way also allows me to manipulate the paint more as I go along because if I just put thick blobs of paint initially, which I do sometimes, there's less I can do with it as I go along. And I am establishing the eye for this painting, I didn't really do an outline with paint. I did it with charcoal, as you can see. I didn't fix it, but I'm using it as an outline and the charcoal is mushing with my paint somewhat, but that's okay. I didn't put too much charcoal because I wanted to be able to manipulate as much of the painting and as much of the background as possible. I didn't want to lose anything to any marks that I made that I couldn't get off. I'm adding some highlights and defining the facial features more as I go along. For highlights, I really use a lot of Naples yellow in this painting and I tone it with other colors to create varying degrees of highlights. If I need it to be a little bit rosier, I add some cadmium red. And if I need it to be a little bit orange, I add some cadmium orange. Um, but I use Naples yellow a lot in this painting, and I use it in general for highlights, especially on darker skin tones. My model's eyes are extremely bright, but even then, the whites of her eyes are not <laughs> extremely white, so I went in and toned down the highlight of the catch light. I used a lot of repetition in this painting, so for the skin tones, I used cadmium red and Lizard and Crimson, and I'm repeating that in her clothes as well. The blue and the green is also a repetition from her face, colors that I've used before on her skin tones to mix them. So I use those to create kind of like a cohesive unit, but I can introduce more colors if I want to, and I feel that they stand out more this way because there's not a million different colors that I'm introducing. There are some, and it just seems to pop more. For example, I'm painting the kite and I'm using a mix of quinacridone magenta and alizarin crimson with titanium white to create the base shade of the kite. It's a pinky kite. I use some of the same colors I've used before in the painting to deepen colors or to lighten colors and then I see where I can introduce new colors to kind of make them pop. So I use Montserrat orange on the kite to give the highlights a little bit of a change. I talk a lot about repetition in my other paintings and my other videos as well, just because I find that it is such a powerful tool to create a really good painting. By that I mean if you repeat colors over and over, introducing new colors becomes something of a tool to create surprise or to create visual interest and it ties the whole painting together because there's a visual harmony that repetition creates. 
The kite is a pinky shade, but I didn't want it to be just pinky. It never really reads that way. Nothing is really only one color. There's always a variation and there's always a nuance to each color that you have to bring to your canvas. So in this painting, I used for the highlights a lot of titanium white, yes, but I also used some Montserrat orange and Naples yellow light for the highlights of the kite. And I'm tying those colors back to the embroidery on her dress as well. And as soon as I finish this up a little bit, I want to go into the background, but I don't want to lose the beautiful copper. So I decided that I don't want to cover it up completely. I mean, why would you? It's just such a beautiful background. And I decided to create these doors as the background and I wanted to use a lot of blue in it. I felt that it would really contrast it against the beautiful copper and I wanted my brush strokes to be visible and I'm working in very very thin layers and I'm using a rather rough tissue to remove some paint here and there because my objective is to let some of the copper show through. I don't want to cover it up completely. And really, it's only when you put in some background that you can really tell how everything relates to one another. So my background kind of changes the way how I perceive the colors, especially of the hair. So I'm going in and working on it a little bit. So my layers are also consistently getting thicker as I go along. And after I'm defining the mouth a little bit more because it looks like she has no mouth right now, I'm gonna go in, I don't have a ruler, so I'm just gonna use my palette and I'm gonna use it to create the lines of the door, as you can see right there. I didn't really have anything else handy and I just used what I had on hand. So my palette functions as a ruler and nothing was too liquidy that I couldn't use it as such. I am tweaking the highlights of the face a little bit and just kind of seeing where I need to add more color, add more depth. I'm going in and developing the face a little bit more and this happens when you start a painting. You lay in the base colors, you lay in the base values and as the painting goes along you just keep developing it and I found that that's honestly the easiest way to do things because if I were to develop everything initially I think I'd have been a little bit lost because I wouldn't have known what the background looked like, I wouldn't have known what the other colors read like, so really just keep working on the painting as a whole. I'm going back and developing the rest of her dress. So I used a lot of the same shades as I used um, on the rest of her body. A lot of alizarin crimson, a lot of cadmium red, cadmium orange, and also a lot of burnt umber and some blues in there, ultramarine. The kind is kind of front and center in this painting and I didn't want to give it any design because I felt that it would compete with her dress and with the background and I decided to keep it plain which meant that I had to spend a little time developing it and making sure that it had enough visual interest to be able to handle being at such a forefront. To do that I pushed the darks and the lights of the kite so that it could stand to be in the foreground. And although I'm repeating a lot of colors in the kite I'm adding touches here and there that are a little unexpected. They are colors that I haven't used in other places of the painting, just to add a little bit of visual interest. And now that I've developed such a major part of the painting, I'm going to go in and see how to offset it with the background. I want to really juxtapose it with the texture and the brush strokes of the paint in the background. Again, I'm leaving a lot of the background showing the copper leaf through because I really want to show the beauty of the copper leaf in this painting. I didn't want to cover it up completely. And once I've established the darks around the figure, I'm going in and finishing up some more of the highlights of the face. And I really like this angled detail brush that I'm using. It's kind of a cheap brush that I bought when I was in India and it's 
really, really useful for small details. So if you do ever find a brush with kind of like a hook, not, not a hook, but kind of like a bent um, brush head, it's really useful for these type of things. I'm just tweaking some of the values on her face just to make it read a little bit better. And sometimes I use my finger to smudge things as well, especially if it's on the face. But if you do that, be sure to use a barrier. I always wear gloves when I paint because I do not want to get those toxins on my hands. And I like to use a barrier cream under my gloves as well, just for added protection. The most fun part is when you get to the end of the painting where you can add all the details, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm going in and adding all the finishing touches and obsessing over whatever details I want to. I am just going to sign my name so that we can say we are done. The painting is finished. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time with another painting.